Swing is the subgenre of jazz music, but swing also refers to a group of dances that developed alongside swing music. Swing is about musicians and dancers. All the way back in the 1920s, the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra laid the foundations of swing music with the emphasis on call response interplay between band sections as well as granting time to soloists in interludes. Henderson's big band was a key factor in bridging the Dixieland and swing eras. Don Redman joined the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra in 1923 or 1924 depending on your source of information. His arrangements greatly influenced their sound and the sound became a hallmark of swing. 1924 was definitely the year that Louis Armstrong joined the orchestra though. He later became one of the most influential figures in jazz and he performed with many other swing icons later in his career, such as Ella Fitzgerald. Speaking of influencers, the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra also made an impact on Duke Ellington. He definitely branched out into swing music too, but is also quoted to have said the wise words, jazz is music, swing is business. The band that really pushed swing music with nationwide broadcasts was the Earl Hines Orchestra. Earl Hines and his band are noted as the first black big band that toured the US, including the South. Swing dance was not formally defined in the 1920s yet, at least not in the same way as the distinct dances that emerged a decade later. The Texas Tommy was a popular dance, even though it had emerged much earlier, around 1910 in San Francisco. It had started as a dance of black communities, but it also became a popular dance among white socialites when the dance conquered the ballroom of the upscale Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. There was also the Charleston, both a dance and a tune from 1923, which were performed as part of the Broadway show Running Wild. Another popular dance that originated in black communities was the Black Bottom. It was featured in the 1924 show Diner in Harlem and it was famously performed by Broadway actress, dancer and singer Anne Pennington. The first big step towards a distinct swing dance was made by Shorty George Snowden and Maddie Purnell. Shorty George coined the term Lindy Hop when he and his partner won a dance marathon in 1928. Take that with a pinch of salt though, they did win the marathon but a history is a bit hazy on the naming site. Nevertheless, his legacy has lived on within the Lindy Hop as the dance move Shorty George is named after him. And insignificant right now, but very important a decade later, the Savoy Ballroom opens in Harlem in 1926. Swing had its prime time from the mid-1930s until the mid-1940s. Those years were the swing era. Many great big bands flourished during this time, such as Count Bassie Orchestra, Chic Webb and his orchestra, and when Chic Webb died in 1939, his band lived on as Ella Fitzgerald and their famous orchestra. Yeah, that Ella Fitzgerald. Swing formed as its own dance genre too. The swing era culminated in the creation of Balboa, Shaq and Lindy Hop as well as Lindy Charleston. At the Savoy Ballroom, Whitey's Lindy Hoppers became an acclaimed professional performance group with great dancers that later moved on with their own dance careers. They were Al Mins, Leon James and Willa Mae Riker, Frankie Manning and Norma Miller, among many others. Whitey's Lindy Hoppers also brought swing dance to the big screen. They appeared in the famous A Day at the Races, Key Punching and Hells of Hopping, among quite a few other movies. The Savoy Ballroom was also home to Leroy Stretch Jones, who was an inspirational source and idol to many Lindy Hoppers at the time. In the 1940s, several Lindy Hop offshoots appeared too, East Coast Swing and West Coast Swing, as well as Jive. During the late 1940s, Swing slowly changed into less danceable forms. Big bands also felt the impacts of living in war times. Resources were occasionally scarce and travel proved difficult for the large big bands. There was also the American Society of Composers and Producers that banned music from their repertoire to be broadcasted after royalty negotiations with broadcasters failed. This ban lasted for 10 months in 1941. On top of that, in 1942, the American Federation of Musicians put a ban on recording and demanded royalties to be paid to musicians. This ban was in effect for more than a year. But the biggest blow came when the federal government imposed a 30% excise tax on dancing nightclubs in 1944. Over the next decades, the tax was lowered to 20%, 10% and finally eliminated in 1965, but by then, the dancing world had long moved on past swing. Big bands recovered in the 1950s and 60s, but it wasn't time for a swing revival yet. The Savoy Ballroom closed in 1958. Around 1980, swing dance started to make a comeback. Dance scenes were featured in Steven Spielberg's hilarious action war comedy 1941, which was released in 1979. In 1982, the Harang Dance Camp opened in Sweden, which became the largest dance camp for African American jazz dancers and which hosted icons of the swing era, such as Frankie Manning and Norma Miller, among many others. Finally, swing dance had its glorious revival in the 1990s. Movies such as Swing Kids and Swingers contributed to this, as well as a Gap commercial featuring swing dancers hopping to the song Jump, Jive and Wail by Louis Prima. Swing music made it back into the mainstream too, with electro swing artists such as Caravan Place and Power of Stella. Swing is back and it's here to stay. For now.